Hi, I'm John McAuliffe, Chief Marketing Officer of VFM Leonardo, and welcome to VTV. VTV has been produced for hotel e-commerce, marketing, and sales professionals to provide insights, knowledge, and learnings from industry experts on how to extract more value from a hotel's presence on the internet. Each week, I will interview an industry expert on a single topic. We have discovered many of these topics from the industry people like yourself and encourage you to let us know if there are other topics you would like us to cover in future episodes of VTV. You can email us at vtv at vfmleonardo.com and make your suggestions anytime. Welcome to today's episode. Our topic today is online marketing versus offline marketing. And I am joined by David Atardi. David is the director of e-commerce at BF Saul & Company. He manages all e-commerce activities for BF Saul's 18 hotel properties. David, welcome to the show today. Thank you, John. And thank you for joining us on uh, VTV. Glad to be here. Thank you. Today's topic, online versus offline marketing. David, uh, we've seen uh, over the number of years a tremendous growth in travel shoppers flocking to the online space. I've seen some recent reports that indicate over 80% of travel shopping is done online, which represents about 90 million travel shoppers in the U.S. alone. How has your hotel's marketing approach changed in reaction to this trend? Uh, well, you know, I, I think it's changed dramatically, actually, um, especially in the last five years. Um, you know, when, in talking to internal property level people at our hotels, I often ask them, out of every 10 people that walk through the door, <clears throat> how many people do they think have seen a rack card or a printed piece of collateral or something they've put together that should tell that could tell them about their hotel? And usually they, they say, you know, I don't know, maybe half of the people that walk through the door. And I think the real number is probably closer to somewhere between zero and one. Um, and then I ask them, how many people do they think that walk through the door of every 10 have seen some form of their hotel on the internet, whether it be their hotel independent website, their brand website, or some review online? And I think that number probably is closer to those statistics, somewhere between eight and 10. So, you know, that's helping us internally get the focus on off our online marketing within our own division and in, in our property level team members. Um, you know, I, I think historically hoteliers have, in the spirit of guest satisfaction, you know, always tried to be everything for everybody. And, um, you know, I think one of the things that they try to be is sort of marketers. And I think what, what I'm trying to do inside of, our, inside of our organization is say, you know what, we have tools, we have resources, we have talent inside, our, inside of our own company to really be good at this. And let's, let's focus on the right things. Um, you know, I, in that same vein, you know, th there's a promotion inside of the hotel. People are very quick to hop on their PC and pull up some clip art and put together a publisher or a PowerPoint flyer and throw it up in the lobby and expect, you know, expect sales to rise. But um, I think it shifted so much where that you know we need to have slick sort of we need to pick our spots along um, in terms of offline marketing and printed collateral and be good at it and have a professional look and feel and it needs to be consistent. But more than anything, it just needs to supplement what people are seeing online. And that experience starts way before people walk in the door. Um, and I think it's all, part of a, it's all part of a coordinated marketing effort that is um, mostly electronic based, but you know, it's supplemented with, with, printed, with printed collateral. Um, and you know, people aren't shopping in the same place. I mean, some people are finding our hotels uh, through search engine searches uh, on Google or Bing or Yahoo, and some people are going directly to our independent website. Some people are finding us on our on Marriott.com or Hilton.com or whatever, and then there are those that are on third-party internet sites um, or, or or TripAdvisor. Um, so we're conscious of all of those online marketing pieces, and then using you know, like I said, picking our spots. In, in offline printed material to, to be consistent with the, with the personality of our hotel and a level, a high level of service that we provide. But that transition from offline to online is, is really, I mean, I think, I, I don't know exactly the, the, the marketing spin, but I would say that 95% of all of our marketing and advertising dollars are spent online right now. 
That's pretty significant. Yeah. Um, and you did talk about the fact that there is there is still an amount of offline that you're uh, marketing that you're doing. What is the difference in the role that online plays versus offline? Um, like I said, I think I think offline printed pieces have definitely have their value and have their spots, uh, have their place inside of our uh, strategy. I think printed offline things are can really really make uh, make a big difference for us on property. Um, getting people to the property once they're there. You know, a lot of our hotels have um, have retail uh, restaurant outlets. We have a couple pub concepts in some of our properties. And once we get them there on property, it's using those tools to drive them into into the restaurant or to um, you know to promote brand promotions, whether it be through IHG's you know biggest free night promotion and getting them to sign up for Priority Club points, or whether it be something on Marriott.com. But you really being smart about what we're putting in front of uh, in front of our guests on property, and and using it to supplement what they're seeing before they before they even walk through the door. I also think um, from a sales and marketing and relationship perspective that there's definitely a role for printed offline material um, in you know, relatively traditional sales kits. I think that's something that people still find value in. I think when there's people selling your hotel, building relationships with potential guests and, and uh, corporate clients, I think there's value in giving them something that's professional looking and it's slick and it represents your hotel. And I think people feel good about taking something um, that they can keep and have but again, that's ultimately going to drive them probably to the web. So those two things have to be consistent. Right. So it sounds like most of your offline activity is done on site and you use online marketing to drive people to your hotels uh, for, uh, for booking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's fair to say. You know, again, it's, we're always trying to create a 360 degree experience for our guests. And that starts from the first time they have even a thought about going to wherever our markets are, all the way through their research process, through their booking, you know, through that booking funnel, and then even after after their um, after their stay with with follow up items online, whether it be um, reaching out to them via email um, to to get a you know through the brand to get a guest satisfaction survey or to to solicit their feedback via a, um, a travel review mechanism such as TripAdvisor or something like that. So, it, you know, it's, it's a really, it's a full circle. It's a 360 degree strategy that we try to have through our online efforts. You know, one of the things that, that uh, as a fellow marketer that I've always loved about the internet is uh, it is very measurable. Uh, and it allows us as, as marketers to bring a little bit more of a quantitative measurement to our marketing activities as it specifically relates to revenue. Mm. What type of uh, ROI should one expect from online marketing activities in the hotel business? Um, you know, th that's tough to say. And I, and I can say that, I, unfortunately, I've had some terrible experiences with receiving ROI and, and then some pretty good ones. I, I've had, you know, a, an online campaign where we spent, I think we spent $20,000 and got about $10,000 in revenue. Um, and then we've had some where we have we didn't spend anything and probably realized close to fifty grand, um, and it, it just depends on the on the medium, uh, on the outlet in the in the channel. Um, typically, I, I can say I think pay per click advertising probably is the most easily uh, measurable easily measurable uh, outlet for online marketing and. and and we, we usually experience, our goal is to experience somewhere between 20 and 30 to 1 ROI um, on our pay-per-click ads. And those that, sometimes those are funneled through um, our independent websites or they're, they're supplementing what the brands are doing online and, and augmenting their keyword buys to um, help us compete on our street corner. Um, so, you know, in terms of what I would expect to see on an average ROI it depends on, on the on the effort on the initiative, um, but I'd say somewhere between fifteen to twenty to thirty or uh, thirty to one. And then there's also a you know a paradigm shift of how we actually look at ROI. Um, in a lot of ways, ROI might not even be the right metric. Um, 
you know, one thing that I've been talking with our people internally is sort of a, a paradigm shift of switching from ROI to something that I've, you know, I, I've heard maybe a year ago that I really like called ROE or return on engagement, which is, you know, we're not necessarily investing dollars and cents into advertising, but we're engaging our, our customers, engaging our clients through, you know, social media sites, social networking sites, um, dialogue through um, travel reviews, whatever. And that return can come in all kinds of different ways. Ultimately, obviously, we're all businesses, so we, we want it to eventually lead to dollars. But um, that return can be measured via uh, impressions, um, visits to your website, uh, click-through rates, um, whatever. And you know, one thing that I would suggest to any marketer in, in the hotel space is, you know, if you're measuring something that's not dollars, try and find a way that ultimately leads to dollars. I know for us, uh, we'll have a lot of campaigns that will lead people, you know, the goal of the objective of the campaign, whether it be through email or through link building and partnerships, is to lead people to our websites. Um, and we're always tracking revenue websites. So one of the things that's a key metric for us is how efficient or how productive are our websites. You know, if, we, if, we're, doing, if we're making X amount of money in a month from one uh, website, how many, what's the traffic? And just, we do a little math and we find out, okay, well the value of one visit to that site is X. Um, and by running campaigns, you can say, okay, well, we increase that from X to X plus 10. Um, and you know, that's, I think that's a, a relatively simple but focused way to, to measure ROI. Sure, and I would suggest as well that uh, you had talked about a marketing funnel uh, previously, and if you have a very good handle on what the stages of that funnel are, you can actually put your metrics towards each one of those stages to ensure that people are moving closer and closer Absolutely. to the booking side of, uh, of the equation. Absolutely. David, thank you very much for joining us today. My uh, pleasure. It was uh, very insightful, and we enjoy having you on the, uh, on the program. Well, I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thank you. To all the viewers out there, uh, be sure to visit uh, vfmleonardo.com and uh, VTV uh, and post your comments. Uh, tune in next week uh, for our next uh, industry expert.